All right, so we're going to move on to our last session. Um, every once in a while, we will do uh, kind of a Data Hub 101, which is kind of more of like the basics of the fundamentals of Data Hub. Today, we're actually doing a Data Hub 201, so a little bit more advanced, and we're going to focus on metadata enrichment. Um, and like Shoshanka said, today is very heavy on it. We're talking a lot about ingestion. We're talking a lot about metadata ingestion, so, or uh, enrichment, excuse me. So let's, let's dig on into this. Um, so let's set the scene really quick. You and your team have successfully ingested metadata into Data Hub. We have, uh, your stack is pretty straightforward. You have Snowflake for your warehouse. So we've ingested, uh, we've ingested uh, schemas, tables, usage, profiling, basically everything that Shoshanka just covered. From DBT, we've ingested our models and DBT test outcomes. And Looker, we've ingested uh, explores, looks, and dashboards. So that's great. We have kind of the foundation there. Um, but now it's actually time to push it one step further and start to enrich your metadata. So if we take a look at our um, at just a, a sample page, so this is our pet profiles data set. What do we mean by metadata enrichment? Like what are what are the ways that you can do it? What are the, some of the options there? So first and foremost, when we talk about metadata enrichment, we, we mean uh, applying kind of a plain language definition. So that could be at the, in this example, the data set level itself, or even down to the column level. The next piece of it is ownership. In Data Hub, we have a few different um, concepts of ownership. So it could be anything from a technical steward to a business user or a stakeholder, um, but really just helping people understand who to go to when you have questions um, and who's responsible for those entities. The next part of it is tags. So these are more kind of like social uh, social tags or kind of ways to kind of organize or, or group your, um, your entities together in a less governed way. So a little bit more flexible there. And again, you can add tags at the data set level or even down to the column level if you'd like. The next one is glossary terms. So these are going to be more of our governed business terms that really describe how the how the data entity or the um, the data hub entity, excuse me, relates back to a business either measure or definition, et cetera. Again, those can be defined at the data set level or the comm level. And then last but not least, the domain. So a domain is really popular in data mesh implementations and just kind of providing this logical grouping of entities uh, within within an organization. So those are all the ways that you can enrich metadata, um, but what are the ways that you like practically do it, right? Practically speaking. So first and foremost, um, we talk about uh, this idea of shift left a lot, um, and we're gonna go into detail, but so first and foremost, you, uh, you can enrich at the source and then ingest. You can transform your metadata prior to ingestion. You can do a bulk import using our CSV enrichment. Um, you can do ongoing enrichments uh, via our API, or you can just do manual enrichment um, ad hoc as needed from the Data Hub UI. So let's actually dig into these a little bit. When we talk about shift left, what we're saying is um, if and when you are defining your metadata or enriching that metadata at, at its source, we want to extract that as much as possible. So for this, in this example, in this you know, very simple stack, we have Snowflake, DBT, and Looker. Um, in Snowflake, one way that you can start to define or uh, enrich this metadata is by providing uh, column level descriptions or table level descriptions, which we will automatically extract. Um, for DBT, there's this idea of um, meta annotations. So this is where we can start to map ownership. We can start to map tags, terms, domains. It's super flexible. Um, this is also true for our support for um, protobuf, where you can annotate the schema there and, and do some mapping that way. And then last but not least in Looker, if you are annotating or adding descriptions within your LookML, we'll automatically extract that. So it could be anything from that um, field level description, adding tags to it, et cetera. So the idea here is that, um, and, and really this is the, the preferred and, and kind of like most um, uh, bulletproof way, I'd say, to, to consistently enrich your metadata, where you really want to do it where the code is changing and evolving as the, um, as the ingestion or the creation or transformation of data evolves over time. Um, so this provides us a really flexible way to um, extract from that code base, make it available in Data Hub going forward. The next part is this idea of a, a transformer. So um, 
this is something that's supported uh, within Data Hub. The idea is that um, when you are connecting to a source, so let's say Snowflake, maybe there's some logical grouping of ownership by schema, or maybe there's some logical, um, or maybe there's like a pattern around assigning PII to columns that have the word email in them. The idea here in a transformer is that when you're ingesting from a singular source, you apply patterns or kind of rely on those patterns to apply either, you know, ownership, domain, uh, domain description, you know, kind of all the things we had talked about. And the benefit here is that this is executed every time your ingestion runs. So as there's, let's say, a new table added to your schema, if it has that pattern and it matches it, it's going to automatically apply your tag or your glossary term, your owner, et cetera. Um, so it really just keeps up with the evolution of the data at source. Um, but and this is a great this is a great uh, use case if you're maybe not actually uh, managing those descriptions or owners or annotations within the source itself. So it's just kind of that intermediate step before you actually ingest it into Data Hub. Um, we've talked about CSG, uh, CSV import a couple of times during town hall. Um, this is really great for after the fact enrichment. So after you've actually ingested your data into Data Hub, um, maybe you actually have a, you know, a, a Google Sheet doc that's floating around and people are kind of maintaining some idea of like ownership or descriptions there. Um, this makes it really easy to kind of crowdsource that information and then bulk ingest it back into Data Hub. And what's also nice here is that it can go across sources. So you can do it, you can have, you know, do a single bulk update for Snowflake and DBT and Looker all at the same time. Um, and it isn't specific, it's not specific to, um, like you don't have to be super uh, specific about um, pattern matching or, you know, kind of source by source. So, you know, this is an example here of us enriching um, resources across Looker, across Snowflake and DBT. We're applying glossary terms, we're applying one or many tags. Um, you can also do the same thing, apply one or many terms. Um, same thing around owner, you can do one or many and you can pr uh, provide the description. So all of this is additive. Um, as you ingest it, maybe as you're collecting this information, you can ingest and, and add to your, your kind of uh, metadata model there. And like I said, this is just really great for kind of like bootstrapping your initial um, ingest of, of uh, entities into Data Hub and then crowdsourcing from uh, folks within your, uh, within your organization. The next one is um, API enrichment. So this is gonna be more kind of like ongoing or programmatic enrichment. Um, this is really great when folks are starting to manage definitions as code. So as that code evolves, you can actually emit, or as those definitions evolve, you can emit those changes back into Data Hub. Um, maybe you have some very predictable kind of deployment processes and you know going from maybe testing and staging and then into production. Um, you can just programmatically emit those tags to, like, for example, a, a, a attach a tag that says now it's in production, and, and you don't have to keep track of where the deployment is um, and then go manually uh, apply it. Instead, you can just apply that as it evolves, and it's always going to be up to date there. Um, this is also uh, relevant to our kind of like circuit break or similar to our circuit breaking so you know when your um, when your DAGs evolve as those relationships evolve, you can um, emit lineage edges and you know really just manage these things as the operational tasks uh, evolve and the, the pipelines that support them over time. Um, and then last but not least, you can always just go into the UI and you know manage these definitions or manage these um, uh, this this enrichment manually. Um, and so this is where you know, we provide um, the ability to edit table level description, column level description from the UI. Uh, you can also add links. So if there are maybe some external resources that are helpful, you can point out to those. You can add your owners, you can add your tags, you can add your terms, and add your domain, and all of that fun stuff. Of course, this is going to get a lot easier once we have the bulk editing rolled out that John demoed. Um, but this is just a great way to, uh, you know, kind of like last, but or, uh, do a little bit more ad hoc or as needed um, enrichment as you go. So with that in mind, there's no kind of one right way or one perfect way to enrich your metadata uh, within, within Data Hub. So we encourage you to 
um, you know, kind of mix and match those different uh, ways, depending on your stack, depending on your, um, your workflows, and then really just find what works for you so you can keep it as up to date and um, accurate as things go along. Now let's go enrich some metadata, folks. 